Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm glad you found me here. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. I am shooting for 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I just started my YouTube channel this year and it's already been so much fun getting to share my love of fashion and pageantry with all of you. So make sure to subscribe, thumbs up this video, and let's get started. So today is a two-parter. We're talking first about body image in and after pageantry. And then I'm also doing a swimsuit unboxing. So if you are here for just the swimsuits, I don't blame you. I'll put a little note down here where to click ahead to. If not, let's get into it. So oh, body image and pageantry. So this is something that I don't feel like it's talked about enough by the women competing in the program because I mean, they try and touch on it every year, but it's always like the very surface level of like, if you have a body, you have a swimsuit body, but then we see all 50 or 90 girls on stage that are like size two, rock hard abs, and everyone's like, huh, okay, yeah, if you say so. So um, it's also body image and, you know, size and all of that is another big issue that I think people either take offense to pageantry or find it to be outdated because again it's the judging of the outward appearance and all of that. That is a whole nother video. I'm not going to get into that today but I will tell you when I competed at Miss USA the portion I was most excited for was swimsuit because I worked dang hard to get in the best shape of my life for Miss USA and I'll insert a photo somewhere around here because again, I was so proud of the progress I made. That was like two years of working to get in the best shape of my life and all I wanted to do was stir up my stuff and show it off. So it was just the most empowering thing in the world. And again, we'll leave that whole like, should there, shouldn't there be a swimsuit portion in pageantry? We'll leave that for a whole nother video. Comment down below if that's something you'd wanna see. So I think Body image is something, again, we don't talk about a lot. It's something that I've actually had a lot of conversations with my Miss USA sisters about because there's just this, after you go to Miss USA, you're in the best shape of your life. You know, it's on television. It lives on YouTube forever. You know, the photos are out there forever. And so you feel like you are constantly being compared to yourself at that best point in your life. So especially for girls that competed at the national level, there's this sense that you have to maintain or else, you know, you've let yourself go. You're less than, and no one wants to be that girl in the reuni reunion photo where everyone points to you and is like, oh wow, did you see so-and-so? You're like, she blew up like a balloon. Like she must've starved herself for Miss USA. And, um, these are not my opinions. These are literally things I have seen on the internet because there's a lot of trolls out there if you didn't already know. So that puts a lot of pressure on us. So I've talked to my sisters about this as well, about how that can lead to girls post pageant life, you know, really feeling like they need to edit their photos to just keep up with this body that they put out there you know, five, 10, however many years ago, and to try and at least look on social media like they've maintained. So that's kind of the general overview. I'll go a little bit deeper into my personal story. So growing up, I was always teeny tiny. Um, I remember when I was like 10 years old, I was a healthy weight for an eight year old. And that's because I was a competitive gymnast and I was just naturally thin and small. And so after I quit gymnastics, I gained about 20 pounds in a month. Over the course of junior high, I grew like six inches. And um, so my body was just still trying to figure itself out. And I was pretty small all the way through, you know, junior high, high school, even into college. Um, college is where I first started to realize like, okay, I'm thin, but I want to be fit. And so that's when I started really getting into fitness. I became a group fitness instructor teaching Zumba, love Zumba. 
and took dance classes. Anytime I got done with homework before like 8 p.m., I would go to the gym because it was just like a fun thing to do. I also didn't party in college, that's another video. So I had tons more time to do activities like that. So yeah, that was just kind of my journey with fitness and my body. I honestly, it's so funny looking back, but when I had friends that would be like, oh, I don't wear shorts because I don't like my legs, or oh, I've never worn a bikini in my life, I'm so self-conscious. And me, always having been small, I was like, oh girl, no, like show your legs, it's just a leg, like get over it, like just love your body, whatever. But I had never been in a place where I had any self-consciousness about my body because I've always been naturally small. So then after college, this, if you watched my video about how I got into pageantry, my pageant journey, um, I will link that down below. But you know, I actually didn't start pageants until I was 24 years old. So I had graduated from college, started my first real job. I was working like 40 plus hours a week and I just wanted a hobby. And so I was like, you know, I haven't worked out in a couple years. I've been eating, you know, whatever McDonald's, <laughs> fast food drive through I want, because that's another thing all growing up. It didn't matter what I ate, what, how many sodas I had, how many pizzas I ate, nothing showed on my body. So I had probably 24 years where I could do that and eventually it caught up to me. But um, yeah, so I prepared for my first pageant just doing like blog lotties online. Um, I re-upped my Zumba certification. So I was doing like some cardio and this is what I looked like at my first pageant, which I look back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, I like didn't really restrict myself. I don't think I even truly dieted for that pageant. That was just like what I had looked like my whole life. So that year I placed second runner up and I got super motivated, just fell in love, got the bug. And um, I hired a trainer to prep me for my second year. Cause again, I started pageants late at that time. Miss USA, you aged out at 26. So me starting at 24, I was like, I only have two more tries at this. I need to leave like no stone unturned. I need to be the absolute best I can possibly be. So I hired a trainer, got serious about my diet and came back for the next year. And this was what I looked like when I won Miss Idaho USA. So you can already tell I've put on a lot more muscle. Um, it's not quite as like lean and slender as the first year. It's a lot more like fitness. There's a little more abs, you know, things like that. And I was really proud of that. Well then, after winning Miss Idaho USA, it was time to really crank up the volume and get ready for Miss USA. Cause again, you're on a swimsuit, live on Fox. Everyone is seeing you. You wanna look your absolute best. So I worked out probably six or seven days a week. I had a very restrictive diet from um, my trainer. It was, I will tell you what I ate because I ate the same thing every day. So I had two eggs for breakfast with a little side of salsa and green tea. In the morning I had, like for my morning mid-morning snack, I had a piece of fruit. For lunch I had I meal prepped, so I had some chicken. I usually did like this fajita chicken dish because it was easy to meal prep with. And so it was just like slices of fajita chicken and slices of bell pepper. And that was my lunch. For the afternoon, I had cucumber sliced into like little chips. And then I would put laughing cow cheese on them. So it kind of had a little more flavor and that was my afternoon snack. And then for dinner, I would like go to the gym after working a full day, come home and I would have a chopped salad with tilapia. I also hate fish, so that made that rough. And um, that was about it. I honestly don't know how many calories that is. I should look it up, but it was not a lot. So I lost, I only lost about five pounds, but because I didn't have a lot to lose to begin with, it looked pretty darn small, which, a lot of my family, thank goodness for them, they had my best interest at heart, I'll say that. So a couple of them looked at me and they're like, yeah, you're getting really small. And I was like, no, I'm healthy. Like this is the best I've ever been. And they're like, eh, okay, you have toothpicks for arms. <laughs> and um, so after all of that, this is what I looked like at Miss USA.
Again, I'm so proud of it. It was one of the best moments of my life. I just felt like, oh my gosh, I can't even describe it. I was just so proud of what I had been able to accomplish. However, that diet and working out six, seven days a week is not sustainable for a lifetime. So I obviously understand you wanna crank it up before the program and get in the best shape that you possibly can. But at the same time, I think in pageantry, we also need to take a step back and recognize, um, I mean, for me, it was only like a year and a half truly that I was like pageant dieting, which uh, I'm sure that could have some long-term effects, but I'm thinking about girls who start pageantry like young, young, and they're doing this yo-yo for their whole life, like six months leading up to pageant, like diet super hard, and then after that have three months of all the pizza and everything. It just messes with your body so much. So I think we really need to step back and take a moment and think about like a holistic, healthy body. Now this leads me into kind of the part two. So when one of my most amazing experiences, when I was Miss Idaho USA, I was speaking to a group of girls who were, I think it was fifth and sixth grade and I did a panel with them that I was sitting at the table signing autographs after the fact and all of them were just so nice, so complimentary. And then this one girl comes at the end and she sits down, arms crossed, and she's like, as someone who competes in pageantry, don't you think you promote an unrealistic standard of beauty? And I was like, oh my gosh. Number one, she clearly heard that from someone else. I don't think a fifth grader is probably going to come up with such a stance on their own. This is probably something she's heard regurgitated from you know, her mom or parents or people at home. And this actually led us to a great conversation because this was only a couple months after Miss Universe, I guess that would have been 2016, the year that Sierra Birchall from Canada um, made top 10. And so there was a lot of talk in the pageant industry about what a healthy body looks like. So I was able to discuss that with her and I was like, you know what, I could see why you might think that, but if you only judge pageant girls by what you see on stage, by them in the swimsuit and the full rhinestone glam outfit, then you're missing the point. Because for me, being a title holder, being Miss Idaho USA, it was about being a role model in my community. I was still working a 40 hour work week, but I was just making time for the things that were important, which was focusing on my fitness and being an ambassador for the state, traveling, doing appearances, and speaking to people like I was speaking to her. And um, I said, I'm not gonna tell you that those girls don't exist because I met some of them. The ones that are only focused on the external and think they deserve the crown because everyone tells them that they're gorgeous. And, you know, luckily we're seeing a big shift in pageantry to get away from just someone who's beautiful and getting more into someone who is well-rounded, who is healthy, who is confident, who is well-spoken, who has some life experience and really brings her own take to the crown. So that was an incredible experience I had during my year and it really shaped how I saw my whole pageant career, my whole year as Miss Idaho USA. So again, I think the big change that I would love to see in pageantry in regards to body image is focusing on a more holistic approach to health and less on like the binge dieting to get the absolute picture perfect Victoria's Secret body. And I think we're slowly getting there. Uh, Sierra did a great job um, of advocating for that and continues to with her YouTube um, channel that she promotes pageantry and talks about her own experience. Miss Netherlands this year at Miss Universe also had an incredible story. She was a full-time model and suffered with an eating disorder. So she now focuses on being healthy and showing what that recovery can look like. And so she went to Miss Universe this year and she wasn't one of the most slim or slender body types there, but she still looked so healthy. And so I think really focusing on that going forward is something that I would love to see and that I think will make pageants more relevant going forward. So how does this tie in to my swim unboxing? 
I promise you there is a point behind this. Just a little bit more on my body journey. So I lost those five pounds to compete at Miss USA. Looked great, a little skinny, but great. And um, like I said, it just was not sustainable. So the second I got off the Miss USA stage, I was having pizza, I was treating myself but I had Miami swim week two months later. So I still got back in the gym. I was still trying to eat kind of healthy, but it had been so long I didn't really know what that looked like. So this is what I looked like two months later at um, Miami swim week. So I looked fine, but you can already tell it was a big change from what I looked like at Miss USA. And I really chastised myself for that. I thought I had already let myself go and I felt kind of down in the dumps about it. So fast forward, um, I moved, got a new job, got married, got off birth control, and with all of that, there were seasons where I really took diet and exercise um, less seriously because I was far more focused on things like my career and planning my wedding and all of those things. So I loved the way I looked at my wedding, I loved the way I looked on my honeymoon, but I've gotten to a place now where I am about 20 pounds heavier than I was at Miss USA. And again, that can be really hard when I take a photo and wanna share it on social media and I'm like, ooh, that waistline though, like where did my waist go? And that's when I'm tempted to edit things. And I'm not gonna say that I never have, but um, I will say that I don't do it anymore just because I think it's important to show what a healthy body as a 30 something past pageant girl, okay, I'm not 30 something, I literally turned 30 a week ago, but a 30 year old past pageant girl looks like and is healthy. Cause honestly, this is the most healthy I've ever been in my entire life. Like my idea of fun snacks are dried mango and trail mix. And I drink, this is probably not a lot to some people, but. I now drink 32 ounces of water a day, which is great because back in the day I could go days without drinking water just because I don't like it. So I'm at a point in my life now where I feel the most holistically healthy and that just happens to be 20 pounds heavier than I used to be. So I say all that because this past summer, 2019, no 2020, I started to realize I did not feel good in any of my swimsuits and of course typical female thing, I blamed it on my body. I, my body was wrong, not the swimsuit. And it's so funny because I just never dealt with any of that self-consciousness with my body before. And it took me until this winter, we went to a hot springs with a friend and I had the epiphany that all the swimsuits I was trying to fit my now body into were ones I bought around the time I was this Idaho USA. 20 pounds ago and I was chastising my body for not looking perfect in those swimsuits. So all that to say that is why I'm doing a swimsuit haul today because I just want to embrace the body that I'm in right now, being in the more holistically healthy place that I am now and start embracing the skin I'm in. So let's get started with the unboxing. So. I ordered, I actually asked you guys on Instagram where you get swimsuits and you guys, specifically my roommate, Miss Indiana USA, Brittany Winchester, told me cup she. So I had never shopped on there before. I honestly don't think I had even heard of it before, but I'm definitely going to be shopping on there more often because their suits were incredible. I think they're like 25 bucks each and they are so cute and shipping was super fast. So I got three from Cupshe and you know YouTube is very finicky about showing too much skin and honestly I don't know that I want my swimsuit body critiqued on YouTube right now so I'm just going to show you the photo of what they look like on the website and um, hold them up for you so this first one is so cute I love a high-waisted bottom like this so it's a nice rib knit material high-waisted semi full bottom and this is another one of those things where i had already gotten to the point with my body of how i looked in my previous bikinis i was like oh i've reached that place in my life where i don't wear bikinis anymore because i don't have a bikini body and then i would like i follow people like jenna kutcher and some 
uh, like Ashley Graham and more like body positivity advocates on Instagram and they're rocking their bikinis. And I was like, okay, just because I've put on 20 pounds since Miss USA does not mean I can no longer rock a, rock a bikini. So most of the suits I got today are bikinis. So this one, honestly, is probably my favorite one from Cup She. Again, it's like the red, the rib knit material. It's got the cute little bow. And I love the shaping of this one because honestly, the cleavage on this is great because it's a V-neck and it holds tight. It doesn't have a clasp or anything. It just goes straight on over the head. And I just feel like it is so flattering, this top with the high-waisted bottoms. This is honestly probably tied for my favorite. It's definitely my favorite one from Cupshe. I will link to it down below so you can get it if you love it too. I also appreciate they all come individually packaged, which makes it way easy. Okay, so this one, I'm all about a bold color if you can't tell already. And so I got another super high-waisted in this bold yellow. Again, it's got kind of that um, cheeky cut on the bottoms. And then it's just a really simple like bra top. So this is what the top looks like. Now this one, I love the color, but on me, I just felt like it was not my absolute favorite. It's cute but I think I'll probably be returning this one just because I bought five and I don't need five new swimsuits. So this one will probably be going back, but I do love the color. Okay, this next one, I love a brick red. And this one is kind of like a corally brick red. Again, we've got the high-waisted bottoms here, which I really like. Like the side on that, it's nice. And the bottoms are a little more modest. It's got this like cross front detail on the front side. And the top is so nice. It's got adjustable straps and then kind of a crisscross detail on the bodice, which it was just so flattering, especially with the crisscross detail as well on the bottoms. It's just so cute. I love the color, especially when I'm nice and bronze during the summer. This color is going to be amazing. So definitely keeping this one as well. Now moving on to ASOS. I do have a bone to pick with ASOS. It's not necessarily them. It's more FedEx. So I ordered all of these swimsuits very end of April, like literally I think April 29th or something like that. Today is... Today's May 22nd. This just arrived like two days ago. It took over 20 days to get here. And that wouldn't be as big of a deal, except for the fact that it l sat at the post office. So I'm in the suburb of Salt Lake City. It sat at the Salt Lake City post office for over a week. And anytime I talk to FedEx, they're like, oh, well, USPS does like the last mile. And I was like, well, you should probably rethink that because that's a problem. I should not have to wait this long. Anyways, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw this one. This is actually from a previous ASOS order. I got this for our little um, getaway earlier this spring, but it is a gorgeous one piece halter top with this great little belt detail. I love it. It also has a really nice open back. And I just love this for a one piece option because it's nice to have a one piece if you know, you're doing any kind of activity like floating a river or something where you don't wanna worry about like things getting untied or anything falling out. So it's always good to have a one piece option that you love and feel great in. And this one I definitely do. I'm also thinking with this color, I've seen a lot on Pinterest and Instagram like those crochet sundress cover-ups that are like really bodycon. I think this would be gorgeous. So I'm gonna probably get one of those too. Now this is the one that took forever to get here, but I will forgive it because it is gorgeous. Okay, I'm definitely gonna have to put the photo up for this one because it will not do it justice just out of the package because it's a little confusing. So it's this beautiful bold coral color. It's gonna look a bit like a mess, but this is what it looks like. So you've got the two straps that come up from the super high-waisted bottoms. Like, can you tell just how high-waisted that is? It like 
cuts way up on the side, kind of like one of those um, like 1980s workout unitards, but I'm all about it. Then you've got the two straps that come up on the front and then the extra long straps. So I, what I did to kind of match the photo is I like twist the back and then I take this extra part and I tie it around the waist. So again, I will reference the photo here so you can see what it really looks like, but it is so stunning and it honestly makes me feel so good about this new body of mine. Cause you've got this bottom part that really like holds everything in the high leg makes your legs look super long and gorgeous the back is a little bit cheeky but i don't mind because my latina hips at 30 years old have finally come in so i'm okay showing those off and then um, the thin straps on the front make it a little bit sexy and then you've got this tie to do all the fun things with so i just feel like it highlights everything that i want to highlight and it kind of minimizes everything I don't super love right this second. So those are my new swimsuits for summer 2021. I'm so excited that I'm finally going to have swimsuits that I love, that I feel good in, and that are made for this body. So thank you so much for sticking around for this video, especially if you watched the whole thing. Please let me know in the comments down below if you are a pageant girl, a former pageant girl, if body image is something that you've dealt with, whether in pageantry or otherwise. I would love to chat with you down in the comments below. Also let me know what other fashion or pageantry things you would like for me to talk about on my channel. I'm trying to do at least one video a week, if not more. So definitely give me some ideas in the comments down below. And thanks so much for joining me today. Subscribe if you have not done so already and make sure to follow me on social media at Style by Cassie. Thanks, bye.